हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू मशूद हाय मशूद अक्षय हाय गोपी राजा हेलो कौशल सुमन हाय कौशल सी एच कार्तिक जशवंत हाय एम फाइन टी वी डी हाउ आर यू हाई स्कैल्पल यूनास हाई यूनास सबा मोहम्मद नागश्री गुड इवनिंग सबा मोहम्मद हेलो हमाइल हाई हमाइल डेफिनेटली सी हेच फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट्स कैन वॉच एवरी क्लास आई बीन टेलिंग माई मेन इंटेंशन i mean my main goal is that the first year third year or the second year, that is why i'm teaching it uh, completely you know clearly and every point revanth reddy after upper limb and lower limb we shall do thorax and after that we shall start the neuroanatomy alekya good evening alekya right guys so shall we start or is there any of is there any one of your friend who is waiting or shall we start i hope no one is waiting right good evening mohammad good evening saujanya 1991 hi adil good evening sanyasi pandit okay let's start let's start now okay so guys yesterday's class okay yesterday's class i hope you have revised it okay after today's class i'll be sending you the notes okay i'll be sending in the notes so in the yesterday's class we have done a lot of questions i think i hope all of you and uh, starting time mohammad just now okay so i hope most of you have solved this questions those who attended yesterday so we have talked the everything right we have talked the ulnar now we have talked the medial now radial now and the spaces of the hand and everything we have talked everything right now we are left over with the arterial supply of upper limb the brachial plexus and the topics which were given in the poster over there okay so these are the very important topics and we shall start now before starting with the brachial plexus one very small and minute topic i just want to cover it okay so that topic is nothing but your ligaments regarding the wrist joint okay so first important thing you need to know is that i hope you are all writing it down the first important thing you need to know is that this is your radius this is your ulna bone between the radius and ulna this triangular ligament or whatever is this this is called as articular surface or radio ulnar ligament okay this is called as articular disc what is this articular disc or you call it as radio ulnar joint radio ulnar joint okay now coming to the wrist joint how basically this wrist joint is formed look here look here very carefully capitate is the largest mohammad amir we have discussed about the carpal bones long long ago itself so you can watch in my previous lectures right so coming to these carpal bones right uh, the first carpal bone is scaphoid right after that you have got uh, lunate and after that you have got uh, triquetrum and then pc form right i see this is the pc form small bone is called pc form and next important thing in the lower row we have got trapezium we have got trapezoid we have got capitate and we have got hamate these things you know now wrist joint is formed between most of you think wrist joint is formed between formed between radius hi med booster wrist joint is formed between radius ulna and the first row of carpal bones but it is wrong ulna bone does not take part in the formation of wrist joint so how wrist joint is formed is look here very carefully wrist joint is formed between the radius and the articular disc wrist joint is formed between the radius articular disc along with the scaphoid lunate as well as the triquetrum or the proximal row of your carpal bones so this is how the wrist joint is formed okay so let me write it down wrist joint wrist joint is formed between 
radius articular disc radius and articular disc that is joining with what the first row of carpal bones that is scaphoid lunate as well as triquetrum this is very very important to know okay so this is first important thing second important thing is that surrounding the wrist we have got some ligaments guys now what are these ligaments surrounding the wrist look here very carefully from the radius from the radius bone uh, what is this part of the radius called as can i call this as the styloid process of the radius right all of you know this is styloid process of the radius even for ulna also we have got styloid process of the ulna so all the way from the radius till the tri trapezium bone all the way from the radius till the trapezium bone you have got a ligament and this ligament is located on the radial side so this is called as radial collateral ligament what is this ligament this is called as radial collateral ligament what is this ligament this is called as radial collateral ligament next important thing is that we even have a ligament exactly on the opposite side for example you have got a ligament all the way from the styloid process of the ulna till this triquetrum till this triquetrum bone okay so this ligament you call it as obviously what is this ligament you call it as one is the radial collateral then the other side will be obviously ulnar collateral right ulnar collateral so guys if you want to write the notes uh, you can write it or else tonight or tomorrow in the morning itself uh, i will send the notes of all these four parts okay so at a time i'll club it and then i'll send the pdf on to the telegram group okay don't worry about that right next important thing is that yeah all of you look now all of you next important thing is that how many ligaments so far we have covered ligament number 1 yeah yeah pdf mohammad amir pdf i'll give this is radial collateral ligament point number 1 this is radial collateral ulnar collateral ligament that is the second ligament and next important ligament which we have is down here look here very carefully we have got another ligament which starts all the way from the radius from the radius bone and this ligament attaches to your scaphoid as well as your lunate it attaches to your scaphoid as well as your lunate now can anyone tell me what is the name of this ligament guys yeah and by the way which weave is this good evening shweta which weave is this guys if i'm showing it to you like this right so this will be my right side this will be my left side right so this is the right side right side and this is the left side i mean this is the lateral and this is the medial so i am showing you the palmar side and what is this ligament name first important thing before naming the ligament you have to know the sides you know the side that this is a palmar side so the ligament also will be named that way that is palmar and this ligament is attached not uh, kavishka it is not radio scaphoid because it is also attached to scaphoid and lunate also so it is attached it is it, it originates from the radius and it inserts to scaphoid and lunate so this is called as palmar radio carpal ligament palmar radio carpal ligament okay now next important thing all the way from the ulnar bone to the triquetrum bone look here very carefully all the way from the ulnar bone to the triquetrum bone also we have got a ligament on the palmar side very good twinkling tej very good this is called as palmar ulno carpal ligament what is the name of this ligament this is on the palmar side so palmar okay ulno carpal ligament ulno carpal ligament ulno carpal ligament so additionally two ligaments palmar radio carpal palmar ulno so we are done with the ligaments on the breast now we are done with the ligaments on the palmar side now if i'm turning on to the dorsal side here also i have got some ligaments so this is the picture on the dorsal side okay on the dorsal side look here there is a ligament that attaches all the way from the radius to the carpal bones like this okay so obviously this will be called as dorsal radio carpal ligament this is very 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 easy guys i don't uh, find that it is difficult right you have got uh, radial collateral ligament ulnar collateral palmar radio carpal ulnar 
palmar alno carpel and on the back we have got dorsal radio carpel so if you look at the pictures it would be really really easy for you to understand okay next important thing next important thing is that we shall start the brachial plexus and one more important thing i'm going to tell you is that i'm going to teach you the arteries of uh, subclavian artery uh, branches of subclavian artery axillary artery anastomosis around the elbow anastomosis around the scapula not only that i will also teach you the arteries of the the, the palmar arches right the radial as well as the ulnar artery okay the radial as well as the ulnar artery so superficial palmarage deep palmarage are there so i think it would be really better if i draw it on my hand and explain you the radial as well as ulnar artery and its branches okay so it is going to be super exciting i want you to be till the end of the session right let us start brachial plexus can anyone tell me how does this brachial plexus arise from where does this brachial plexus arise all of you know brachial plexus arises from c5 the spinal segments of c5 till t1 but what is an exact answer yes no sp no it is not it doesn't ex start from the axillary artery artery is different very good sanchaita das gupta has answered it correct that it arises from the anterior rami okay it arises from the anterior rami of c5 till t1 now guys look here very carefully you are all first year to third year students right you have to learn each and every basics so when i teach this for a fmg student or a exam going batch student what i will be teaching is that i will directly go to the branches of brachial plexus directly i'll teach what is clumpy paralysis what is uh, the complete claw hand or the spalsian so as a first and third year students you definitely have to know from the basics so i'm going to teach you from the basics best the rest of my videos are in the channel itself don't worry so be patient guys be patient you will learn everything from the basics okay now i will be drawing a picture from that two very important mcqs will be definitely asked now what is that look here this is your spinal cord all of you know that this is your spinal cord right now spinal cord has got a dorsal root it has got a ventral root all of you know that it has got a dorsal root and ventral root on the dorsal root you have got this thing what is this thing guys can anyone tell me this is called as dorsal root ganglia what is this dorsal root ganglia now the now what will happen is that the dorsal root and the ventral root both of them they join together like this the dorsal root right this is called as a dorsal root and this is called as a ventral root the dorsal and ventral root both of them they join together now once they join together what is going to happen they divide into two more branches what are these two more branches one is called as the posterior rami another one is called as the anterior rami so what i was just telling you is that this brachial plexus arises from the anterior rami posterior rami will go on to the back anterior rami will come front okay so i have drawn only on one side but on the other side also the posterior rami will go back like this anterior rami will come front like this and form the brachial plexus clear so this is what i was telling that brachial plexus arises from this anterior rami of c5 till t1 okay now as i'll be teaching i'll be telling you some more important points but for now what you need to know is that within the spinal cord from which enlargement does this brachial plexus arise guys can anyone tell see all of you know that uh, this is your spinal cord all of you know that this is your spinal cord okay let us say that this part is your spinal cord now in this spinal cord in this spinal cord you have got some enlargements let us say we have got some cervical enlargement lumbar enlargement and all so in the same way in this part of the spinal cord this enlargement is called as cervical enlargement okay can anyone tell very good sanchaita gupta very good kartik dasri perfect now can anyone tell 
from which vertebral level till which vertebral level do we have the cervical enlargement guys very very important mcq can anyone tell that not c5 akshay you are you are so close but it is not c5 till t1 it is all the way from c3 till t2 all the way from c3 till t2 we have got cervical enlargement now from this cervical enlargement only from this cervical enlargement of spinal cord only we have got a plexus this is called as brachial plexus and second important thing i want to cover it here itself that all of you know that this is your sternum right uh, izar khan i will post a telegram link here through that you can access my notes okay don't worry now please concentrate on the class izar khan very good amon loloma perfect he is right c3 till t2 now this is your clavicle this is your clavicle now this brachial plexus all the way from the cervical enlargement it comes it goes behind the clavicle and then comes out in this way we are dividing the brachial plexus into three parts what are the three parts of the brachial plexus one is called as the supraclavicular part supraclavicular part and next part which is behind the clavicle that is called as the retroclavicular part and next which is below that is called as the infraclavicular part infraclavicular part and next important question they are going to ask you is that see this is your rib this is your first rib let us say this is your rib number one there are two muscles that attach to the rib number one any guess any guess guys what are the two muscles that attach to the rib number one there are two muscles that attach to the rib number one no 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 kavishka there are two muscles what are those muscles are look here Look here, Kavishka. So one muscle attaches here. Very good, SP Sanchayata Das. Perfect, perfect. So this muscle is called as anterior skeleton. And next, in the same way, we have got another muscle called as middle skeleton. This is called anterior. This is called as anterior skeleton. This is called as middle skeleton. Middle skeleton. Very good, Shweta. Sanjay Pandey, perfect. So, what I am trying to tell you is that brachial plexus passes between anterior and middle skeleton and it passes behind the clavicle, dividing the brachial plexus into three parts. Now, the examiner will ask you two questions. What are those two questions are? First thing is, it passes in between which muscles? That is the first question. Second thing they are going to ask you is that within the supraclavicular part, what parts of brachial plexus we have in the supraclavicular region we have got we have got roots and trunks of the brachial plexus all of you might have known all of you might have known this thing that brachial plexus has got roots trunks divisions and cords right all of you know all of you are attending my live now all of you might know. so in the supraclavicular part we have got roots and trunks in the retroclavicular part we have got divisions in the infraclavicular part, we have got cords. From here itself, guys, many, many MCQs can be filled. So, before, before I go and teach the brachial plexus, have you all understood whatever I discussed just now? Yes or no? Be fast. Very good very very good now now let us let us discuss the parts of the brachial plexus look as all of you have answered me that brachial plexus arises from c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 right c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 now from c5 also we get this thing this is called as a roots okay from C6 root, C7 root, C8 root, T1 root. What are all these? These are called as roots. Now what will happen is that C5 and C6 root, they join together to form a trunk. C7 root does not join with anyone. Again, C8 and T1 join together to form a trunk. And C7 directly forms a trunk. And what are these called? These are called as trunks. 
every trunk which you can see here every trunk divides into two divisions one is called as anterior division and the other one is called as a posterior division okay look here all of you look here it divides into a posterior division like this next we have got anterior division again again look here this c7 trunk also divides into a posterior division and then we have got an anterior division next c8 and t1 also divides into a posterior division and then again we have got an anterior division so what are these these are called as divisions and we have got two types of divisions one is called as a posterior divisions one is called as a anterior divisions next step what is going to happen is that all these posterior divisions they join together to form posterior cord look here the posterior division like this it will join the posterior division here also it will join and finally all these posterior divisions they join together to form this cord and this cord you call it as a posterior cord posterior cord next important thing is that next important thing is that look here very carefully right next these two these two join together and the anterior divisions of c5 c6 and c7 join together to form the lateral cord and lastly we have got the medial cord so how many cords of brachial plexus we have we have got the posterior cord we have got the lateral cord and we have got the medial cord okay posterior cord is formed by all the posterior branches join together to form the posterior cord next anterior divisions of c5 c6 and anterior division of 7 join together to form the lateral cord and c8 and t1 alone forms the medial cord have you all understood this thing yes or no guys come on okay fine so my net is a little bit lag so i could not uh, look at you i'm sorry i could not look at your comments so this is the this is the brachial plexus guys okay if you want to remember this remember even if you don't want to remember don't remember no one is going to ask you draw the brachial plexus in the exam no okay but what they will ask you is the next thing which i'm going to tell you so look here now c5 t6 what will come in the starting these are called as the roots and both of them join together to form what trunk and what did i tell you every trunk divides into an anterior division and posterior division so let us say this is a posterior division this is an anterior division posterior and anterior division very important thing is that exactly from here exactly from this point from the trunk of c5 and c6 you have got two branches what are those two branches are one branch goes above if it is going above i call it as supra next one branch goes below if it is going below i don't call it as infra rather i will call it as sub 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 okay now what is that branch that is going above that is called as suprascapular nerve this is a way to remember this is called as supra scapular nerve and what is the branch that is going below that is a subclavius that is nerve to subclavius nerve to subclavius muscle nerve to subclavius muscle shweta long thoracic nerve i will tell you i will tell you in a minute very good med booster very good samir parashi very good very good why did you delete you are right so we have got suprascapular nerve nerve to subclavius okay so i am not writing it again so we have got suprascapular here and down we have got nerve to subclavius okay now if i am highlighting this area if i am highlighting this area how many nerves can you see here guys let me write down the list here how many nerves can you see first is c5 root c5 root next is c6 root c6 root okay after that you have got let us say a is suprascapular nerve b is nerve to subclavius 
so you have got a that is suprascapular nerve you have got b that is nerve to subclavius isn't it after that you have also got posterior division and anterior division let me also write it that posterior division and anterior division so just count it guys how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this area is involving six different types of nerves and this area you call it as herbs point what is this area you call it as this area you call it as herbs point herbs point why am i calling it as herbs point because this is the area that is going to damage in case of herbs palsy right herbs palsy so if someone asks you what are the nerves that are involved in herbs point not herbs palsy nerves that are related with the herbs point that will be c5 c6 suprascapular nerve to subclavius posterior and anterior division clear all of you right all of you are clear right fine now if someone asks you if someone asks you what are the branches that are involved here can anyone tell me what will be the branches guys anyone come on see we have got posterior cord we have got lateral cord we have got medial cord so let us write down all of them we have got posterior cord right we have got lateral cord we have got medial cord medial cord can anyone tell me what are the branches of the posterior lateral as well as the medial very 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 simple guys okay remember a mnemonic remember a mnemonic remember posterior cord with a mnemonic ulnar u l n a r ulnar okay remember medial cord with m for u m for u and remember the lateral cord L stands for L M L. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, what does U stand for? What are the branches of posterior cord? U stands for upper subscapular nerve. When I tell there is upper subscapular nerve, there will also be lower subscapular nerve. Then L stands for lower subscapular nerve. And what does N stand for? N stands for nerve to latissimus dorsi. Nerve to latissimus dorsi muscle. And what does A stand for? A stands for axillary nerve. A stands for axillary nerve. Very good, Shepuri. Alekhya, very good. Very good. Kavishka, very good. And R stands for radial nerve. R stands for radial nerve. So these are the branches U, L, N A R. These are the branches of the posterior cord. Okay. When I tell posterior cord, ulnar, upper subscapularis, lower subscapularis, nerve to latissimus dorsi, axillary nerve, and radial nerve. Okay. When I tell, when I tell you the lateral cord. Now, now one more important thing, guys. Out of all these nerves, which are the most two important nerves? Axillary nerve is important, and radial nerve is important. Axillary nerve and radial nerve is important. Okay, out of axillary and radial, which is more and more important is axillary. Let us enter into the lateral cord. Coming to the lateral cord, what are the branches? L stands for lateral pectoral nerve. M stands for musculo cutaneous nerve. Very, very good. Very good, guys. You guys are which year? Tell me. Which year are you studying now? And another L stands for lateral root of median nerve. Very good, Sanjay Pandey. Very good. Amon, very good. Lateral root of median nerve. First year. You all are first year and you know all these branches. Really, really, I'm so shocked, guys. Really, really, I'm so shocked and really very happy that you know all these branches in the first year itself. Really great. Thanks to your faculty as well. Right, coming to the medial cord, 
M for you. What does M stands for? See, if there is lateral pectoral nerve, there will also be medial pectoral nerve. There will also be medial pectoral nerve. When there is lateral pectoral nerve, there will be medial pectoral nerve. Next important thing is that there is also medial cutaneous nerve. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Okay, so it gives sensory supply to the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm means it gives sensory supply to the medial side of the arm. Then what about the medial side of the forearm? It is also giving a branch to medial cutaneous nerve of forearm as well. Medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Next important thing is that if there is lateral root of median nerve, there will also be medial root. So medial root of median nerve and finally u u stands for ulnar nerve u stands for ulnar nerve clear u stands for ulnar nerve okay right so next important thing branches guys they will ask you questions about the branches because Nowadays, they won't ask you the question regarding the branches because most of you might have known these branches. Okay? What they're going to ask you is completely clinical. Okay? What is the clinical points they will ask you? Let us start discussing from now. Okay? So, what are the clinical points they will ask you? The first important clinical point is that in the herbs point, what nerves are involved, that is important. And second important thing is that if patient is having damaged the herbs point, that condition you call it as herbs palsy. In herbs palsy, what nerves are involved? Look here guys, in herbs palsy, three most important nerves are involved. Whenever herbs palsy hoga, patient mar jayega. It may, I mean, he, he won't die obviously, but this is just a mnemonic. What does M stand for? M stands for musculo cutaneous nerve. A stands for axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. And R stands for radial nerve radial nerve. So, these are the main three nerves that will be involved in case of herbs palsy. In case of herbs palsy. And second important thing I am going to tell you. Remember this thing that all of you look here very carefully. This was a question that is asked. From root of C5, root of C6 and root of C7. Okay. From the roots of C5, C6 and C7 from all of them you have got a nerve that passes very long, right? This nerve is very long and it passes all the way down. And this nerve, you call it as long thoracic nerve. You call it as long thoracic nerve. So, long thoracic nerve arises from C5, C6 and C7. And second important thing is that where is your herbs palsy point? Herbs palsy point is here. And remember one thing, whenever patient is having, again I am telling you, remember one thing. Whenever patient is having problem to this herbs point, whenever patient is having problem to this herbs point or herbs palsy, after the lesion, this is herbs point, okay? This is C5, C6 root. This is herbs point. After this, whatever nerves are there, might be posterior cord, lateral cord, anterior cord, or anterior division, posterior, whatever nerves are there after the herbs point, all of them will be affected. But before the herbs point, whatever nerves are coming out, they won't be affected. So, as you can look in the picture over here, before the herbs point, what is coming from C5, C6 and C7? Long thoracic nerve. So, always and always and always remember that in herbs palsy, long thoracic nerve is not involved because it is before the lesion, not after the lesion. Clear everyone? So, Long thoracic nerve not involved in herbs palsy. In herbs palsy. Okay. Always and always remember in herbs palsy before the lesion whatever are there, they are not involved. Right. So, first of all, let us discuss about herbs palsy. What is herbs palsy? Herbs palsy is nothing but damage to C5 and C6 roots. Damage to C5 and C6 roots will lead to herbs palsy. And whenever patient will have herbs palsy, you will have a characteristic appearance that is called as policeman 
पोलिस मैन टिप डिफॉर्मिटी पोलिस मैन टिप डिफॉर्मिटी और यू ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज वेटर टिप डिफॉर्मिटी वेटर्स टिप डिफॉर्मिटी ना वाई डू यू कॉल इट एज पोलिस मैन टिप डिफॉर्मिटी और वेटर्स टिप डिफॉर्मिटी बिकॉज पोलिस मैन एज वेल एज द वेटर्स दे आस्क यू द टिप इन दिस वे राइट so they put their hand back and they ask you the tip in this way so as you can look at this baby over here so the baby is having the waiter tip deformity or the policeman tip deformity now if you look i will be writing one by one guys if you look at this policeman tip deformity or waiter tip deformity what are the muscles that will be involved you will know it very easily now look here very carefully the arm the arm is adapted to the body look first important thing the arm is adapted to the body why the arm is okay arm is adapted and look at my arm is it externally rotated or internally rotated obviously it is internally rotated okay third important thing is that third important thing is that this is pronation this is supination now look at my arm is it pronated or supinated it is pronated fourth important thing is that is by l is my elbow flexed or extended it is extended there are four important points one is one is my arm is towards my body adduction okay next it is internally rotated internal rotation next it is pronated fourth my elbow is extended okay so what are the things i have told you what are the things i have told you here let us look at this baby and write down the points what are the things i have told you the first important thing is that my arm is adducted my arm is adducted second important thing is that my arm is pronated pronated third important thing is that it is internally rotated it is internally rotated and fourth important thing is that my elbow is extended my elbow is extended now if you look at this now if you look at this yes mohammad amir what happened mohammad whatsapp number <laughs> don't worry even if i don't give you my whatsapp number you can be in continuous contact with me through telegram facebook or whatever sources we have here okay so whatever help you need whatever materials you need i am there to provide okay so coming adducted pronated internal rotated and elbow extended okay now why the arm is adducted why the arm is adducted like this why it is sticking to the body why it is closely adhered to the body because my arm i cannot raise my arm i cannot abduct my arm that is why it is adducted okay second important thing why my arm is pronated because i cannot supinate my arm that is why it is pronated and why my arm is internally rotated because i cannot externally rotate it that is why it is internally rotated and why my elbow is extended because i cannot flex my elbow that is why it is uh extended okay so but i am taking you slowly to the lesions of whatever are happening to the muscles guys so just pay attention why it is adducted because abductors are weak abductors are weak now what are the abductors do we have here tell me what are the abductors here we have got an abductor this is called as deltoid muscle when deltoid will contract my arm will abduct like this second important thing i have told you in the previous lecture that there is a muscle which comes from the top like this and attaches what is this muscle which is coming all the way from the top guys anyone kavishka not pectoralis major very good tvd beast very good this is supraspinatus very good biraj acharya supraspinatus when i am contracting my supraspinatus my arm is raising like this you see my arm is raising like this so next important thing is supra spinatus so can i tell can i tell that deltoid muscle and supra spinatus muscles are weak in case of herb's palsy second important thing look here second important thing my arm is pronated why because it cannot not cannot because supinators supinators are weak that is why it is pronated and what is a powerful supinator in your upper limb when i was teaching you the muscles of upper limb i told you powerful supinator 
powerful supinator of upper limb is nothing but called as your biceps very good biceps is your powerful supinator third important thing my arm is internally rotated why because external rotators are weak can anyone tell me what are the external rotators yes can anyone tell me what are the external rotators uh shujat it is not teres major it is teres minor okay sanyasi pandit very good it is teres minor it is teres minor as well as infraspinatus also infraspinatus and finally my elbow is flexed my elbow is flexed why because my elbow cannot be extended sorry sorry my elbow is extended why because it cannot be flexed and what is a flexor here obviously here flexors are weak because of biceps so this biceps brachii write it as biceps brachii so guys i could have written down just the muscles and finish this part very fastly but i want you to understand everything with the basic concept okay why is this happening why is that not happening so this is how you learn the things okay so it is now it will be very easy for you to figure out that it is deltoid supraspinatus biceps brachii teres minus and infraspinatus are the muscles which are mostly involved which become mostly weak in this uh herbs palsy clear nohan i even don't know hindi properly but it would be really very difficult to understand i mean to teach you in uh, arabic right uh, have you understood this right so we i think we are done with herbs palsy right so guys all of you know that whenever we discuss about uh, this uh, whenever we discuss about this uh, what is this brachial plexus we discuss about two nerve injuries c5 c6 nerve injury is called as uh, herbs palsy c8 and t1 nerve injury is called as clumpy's palsy right c5 c6 is herbs palsy c8 t1 is clumpy's palsy now out of this which is upper and which is lower tell me c5 c6 is upper c c8 t1 is lower so guys herbs palsy is also called as upper trunk palsy upper trunk palsy and clumpkies is also called as lower trunk palsy okay this is called as upper trunk palsy and this is called as lower trunk palsy clear so this is a very important thing now now shall we shall switch on to now we shall switch on to the clumpkies palsy okay now we shall switch on to clumpkies palsy right so clumpkies palsy is involvement of c8 and t1 whenever patient will have clumpkies palsy the only one important thing he will have is claw hand again i'm telling you this is not this is not ulnar claw which we discussed yesterday this is a claw hand claw hand in the sense the hand becomes completely like this ulnar claw in the sense only the ulnar part is flexed this is claw hand the complete hand becomes like a claw in this way right this is claw hand okay now in this claw hand ulnar nerve is involved plus median nerve is involved this is a favorite mcq of the examiner every time they ask you to filter the questions i mean filter the students out very 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 important now in this claw hand two important things you can find the first important thing is that this is metacarpal uh, metacarpal and phalange and this joint here you call it as metacarpophalangeal joint is my metacarpophalangeal joint flexed or extended it is extended so the first important thing is extension of metacarpophalangeal joint second important thing is that second important thing is that look at my interphalangeal joints between the phalanges i have joints called as interphalangeal joints look at the interphalangeal joints are they flexed or extended they are flexed 
सो फ्लेक्शन ऑफ इंटरफेलिंजल जॉइंट सो वेन एवर समन आस्ट यू वॉट इज क्लॉ हैंड जस्ट डोंट शो देम दिस थिंग इंस्टेड टेल देम दैट इट इज एक्सटेंशन ऑफ एम सी पी फ्लेक्शन ऑफ आई पी एंड इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ अलनार नर्व एंड मीडियम नर्व इन्वॉल्वमेंट ओके अलनार नर्व एंड मीडियम नर्व इन्वॉल्वमेंट राइट नाउ नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट बाई द वे इन अर्ब्स पैलसी we discuss that c5 c6 damage will lead to herpes palsy but how the damage might occur c5 c6 is located here c8 t1 is located little bit deep c5 c6 on the top so if let us say i am sitting under a tree uh, let us say a huge branch fell on my right shoulder a huge branch fell on my right shoulder so there are there any chances that c5 c6 injury can happen yes so any any kind of heavy weight on shoulder heavy weight on shoulder so this would lead to c5 c6 root damage right and yes shujat ali is telling during delivery very good shujat even during delivery you will catch hold of the head of the baby right the newborn and you pull it so when you are pulling it the shoulders are transverse like this right so when you are pulling it what will happen is that the shoulder might stuck within the pelvic cavity and uh, there can be damage because these things are so fragile so the nerves can be damaged but that would be uh, shujatal is all yeah but that would resolve immediately with some physiotherapy shujatal is also telling road accidents yes whenever you fall down if you fall on your shoulder that time you will have damage to this okay whatever it is any kind if for example if there is clavicular fracture also brachial plexus will be injured because you know how brachial plexus passes behind the clavicular right cool when it comes to when it comes to the ulnar uh, sorry clumkis palsy how does the injury happen in case of clumkis palsy guys anyone the first important uh, uh, reason is because of birth injury here also birth injury right let us say let us say only the hand part came out of the vagina and a little bit of head part okay so you will withhold the hand you will catch the head and pull the baby so when you are catching hold of the hand and pulling the baby what will happen what will happen how are you catching hold of the hand and pulling the baby let us say doctor is on the top he is pulling my hand so when someone is pulling my hand what will happen my hand is hyper abducted like this when my hand is hyper abducted in this way there can be damage to this uh, c8 as well as t1 right so not only in birth injury because of hyper abduction of arm because of hyper abduction of arm right or let us say i'm sitting on the top of tree and suddenly i slipped and i'm falling down now i suddenly hold a branch when i hold a branch all my body weight is downwards only i'm holding the hand i mean i mean i'm holding the branch with the hand so in that case what will happen suddenly my hand is abducted in this way so even in this case also you will have hyper abduction of your arm which will lead to claw hand clear everyone so these are the things they will ask you these are the things they will ask you and one last and very important thing before closing this topic is that patient if there is injury of the nerve roots in case of clumkis palsy this would lead to horner syndrome this would lead to horner syndrome can anyone tell can anyone tell what nerve root involvement will cause what nerve root involvement will, will cause horner syndrome all of you are telling t1 uh, farumulla it is not t8 T1, 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 T1. I'm a okay. T1, fine. But what is the exact answer? Can anyone tell me the exact answer? Because there is a recent update, guys. That's why I'm asking you. I want an exact answer. If you if you wanted to know the 
एस पी एस पी एस पी एस पी एज आंसर्ड करेक्ट वेरी गुड एस पी इट इज वाइट रामस ऑफ टी वन ऑल ऑफ यू हैव टू पे अटेंशन नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू हैव टू पे अटेंशन दिस इज डॉर्सल रूट दिस इज वेंटल रूट बोथ द रूट ज्वाइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म दिस वॉट इज दिस कॉल्ड एस वॉट इज दिस कॉल्ड एस दिस इज कॉल्ड एस स्पाइनल नर्व दिस इज कॉल्ड एस स्पाइनल नर्व ओके एक्जैक्टली ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द स्पाइनल नर्व य If you look here, within spinal nerve will give rise to two more thorns or two more branches. Let us say, so there is one branch like this. There is another branch. So there are two branches. Now what will happen is that these two branches will join together. Now how these two branches will join? Look here. This is the branch. This is the branch. Now they both are joining together like this. Clear? So, what I am trying to tell you is that, see, this is one branch and this is another branch. Now, both the branches join together, and both the branches join together to form this ganglion over here. This is called as sympathetic ganglia. This is called as sympathetic ganglion. This is called as sympathetic ganglion. Okay. Now, what are these two branches here? This is called as grey horn. Grey horn and the other one is called as white horn. One is called as grey horn, another one is called as white horn. Or you can also call it as one is called as grey ramus, another one is called as white ramus. Grey ramus and white ramus. Clear? And all of you know, all of you know that here we have got some nerves. Can anyone tell me what are these nerves here? Yes. can anyone tell me what are these nerves which i am drawing on the dorsal side what are the nerves we have we have got sensory nerves and on the ventral side what nerves we have we have got motor nerves right manamela very good manamela ppp very good shahil shahil amrutkar it is not cit1 it is only t1 okay sp is right here next important thing is that we have nerves that are going down from the ventral root these are called as motor branches one we have got the sensory on the up motor on the down so the sensory branches they join motor branches they join together like this clear they join together like this now look this sensory branch enters into the grey ramus whereas the motor branch it enters into your white ramus clear it enters into your white ramus can anyone tell me these sensory fibers are also given another name what is that name can anyone tell me these sensory fibers are located after the ganglion can you can you look at the ganglion here this is a dorsal root ganglion after the dorsal root ganglion all these nerves are called as post ganglionic neurons these are called what post ganglionic neurons and these are called what pre ganglionic neurons because they haven't joined the ganglion yet so they are post ganglionic there is pre ganglionic so always and always remember post ganglionic will enter into the grey ramus pre ganglionic will enter into the white ramus post ganglionic will enter into grey ramus pre ganglionic will enter into the white ramus okay obviously obviously all these nerves even enter into the posterior rami they enter into the anterior rami even the motor nerves they enter into the posterior rami they enter into the anterior rami so if patient is having let me highlight this area if patient is having damage to this area particularly sorry damage to this area particularly the white ramus of t1 the white ramus of t1 exactly this area if there is a damage white ramus of t1 then patient will have a condition called as bernard horner syndrome what is this bernard horner syndrome this is because of white ramus of t1 injury white ramus of t1 injury or lesion very 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 important okay this is very very important all of you understood this yes or no
क्या वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट इफ पेशेंट इज हैविंग हॉर्नर सिंड्रोम हाउ डज ए लुक लुक हियर दिस इज हाउ द पेशेंट ऑफ हॉर्नर सिंड्रोम लुक्स लेट्स डिवाइड इज फेस लुक एट द अदर साइड ऑफ द आई देर इज ड्रूपिंग ऑफ द आई लेट there is what drooping of the eyelid this condition you call it as ptosis okay and this ptosis is mild very good medbuster medbuster selling loss of uh, ciliospinal reflex and ophthalmic very good but the main three triad is that ptosis and look at the pupil guys all of you concentrate on the pupil here i'm zooming the picture all of you concentrate on the pupil the pupil size is more here look at the pupil size it is constricted can i call this as meiosis one is meiosis second is ptosis and third one is the third one is only one side there will be loss of sweating this is called as unilateral anhidrosis unilateral anhidrosis or reduced ipsilateral sweating is everyone clear this condition you call it as bernard horner syndrome clear everyone so this was the thing which i was telling you that when you are pulling the baby out the the brachial plexus here they can be injured so during the birth injury this one and this is called as a hyper abduction of the arm cit1 right and one last question which was asked from this is what are the arteries that supply the brachial plexus can anyone tell can anyone tell the arteries that supply the brachial plexus okay instead of telling that tell me what are the arteries that do not supply the brachial plexus now don't tell femoral artery does not supply no i am asking you the arteries here which do not supply the brachial plexus very good remember one thing carotid arteries do not supply your brachial plexus okay most of you think that carotid arteries will supply the brachial plexus but no subclavian artery and vertebral artery subclavian and vertebral artery both of them they supply the brachial plexus they supply the brachial plexus okay so these are the two arteries that supply the brachial plexus okay is everyone clear with this right guys now let us start discussing the arteries of your upper limb okay let us discuss the arteries of your upper limb now when it comes to the arteries of the upper limb uh, what are the important things can anyone tell what all arteries we can discuss in the upper limb anyone what is the first artery very good axillary artery then we have got <coughs> radial ulnar very good brachial excellent right all of you look here now coming to the arteries very good very good all of you keep this thing in mind keep this picture in your mind every time okay so this is your heart okay this is your heart and this artery which i'm drawing this is called as aorta this is a aorta what is this this is called as an aorta okay now in this aorta you have got two important branches now what are those two important branches of this aorta look here now this is one branch and this is another branch all of you concentrate here i hope you definitely know all these things but please concentrate here so one branch is this one which is going up this is called as brachiocephalic trunk what is this called as brachiocephalic trunk this is called brachiocephalic trunk and this brachiocephalic trunk will further divide into two more branches 
Now one branch that is going on to the right side, this is called as subclavian artery. On the right side, it is called as right subclavian artery. And one which is going on to the top, this is called as common carotid artery. What is this? Common carotid artery. This is called as right subclavian artery. Clear? And this common carotid artery divides again into two. One is called as external carotid. Another one is called as internal carotid. Okay? Internal carotid artery, external carotid artery. Clear? So, this is all the network. So, for example, this is how you have the arterial anastomosis like this. Not anastomosis, these are the arteries you basically have. Right. So, this is how the arteries look. Clear? All of you? Yeah, subclavian arteries on the left, obviously I haven't mentioned it. So, this is what I was about to mention. So, here you have got the common carotid artery again. The same thing you have got on the left side as well. Like this. Okay. Whatever is on the right, that is on the left. So, we have got right subclavian artery. We have got external and internal carotid artery. Now, why am I drawing this picture is that I just want to give you a bird view of whatever I am discussing. So, look here. Till here it is subclavian artery. From here all the way till here, this is called as axillary artery. What is this called? Axillary artery. Now from here all the way till here, this is called as brachial artery. What is this called? This is called as brachial artery. And what will happen is that this brachial artery will further divide into two branches. One is called as radial artery, another one is called as ulnar artery. So this is called as radial artery. And this is called as ulnar artery. So, this is just an overview of what I am going to discuss today with you. Okay. So, we are we shall be discussing about the subclavian artery branches, axillary artery branches, brachial artery branches, radial artery and ulnar artery. So, this is a continuation. If everyone is ready with me and everyone is with me right now, then we shall start discussing the branches. Is everyone with me now? Have you understood so far whatever I have taught you guys? Please be fast. Very good. Let's start now. Let's start. All of you don't write down anything. Don't write down anything. Just watch whatever I'm teaching. Now this point whatever is there. This is called as coracoid process of scapula. This is called as coracoid process of scapula. Now, from the coracoid process, we have got a muscle that is coming out like this. Now, this muscle is called as pectoralis minor muscle. What is the name of the muscle? This is called as pectoralis. Don't write down, guys. I will be a little bit fast. So, you have to go with me. Don't write it down. This is called as pectoralis minor muscle. Second important muscle is that I have been teaching this again and again and again. That from the medial lip we have got a muscle. From which lip? Medial lip. We have got this muscle. And this muscle by now your comments should. By now I want all of you to comment down. Very good. Kavishika is telling. Not pectoral is minor Kavishika. It is teres minor. Teres minor. Teres minor. Not major guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah teres major. I am sorry. Yeah, teres major. Thanks for correcting me. Teres major. Okay. Teres major from the medial lip. Okay. From the medial lip. Remember this mnemonic guys. M-E-T. Met. M-E means medial lip. M-E means medial lip. T. T stands for only one major. Teres major. Then lateral lip will be pectoralis major. Okay. Very good Kavshika. Very good. So this is the thing. Now, the same things I have drawn it down. Look here. This is your first rib. This is your first rib. Okay. And from the coracoid process, you have got your pectoralis minor muscle. This is your pectoralis minor muscle. And from here, you have got your teres major muscle. Okay. Pectoralis minor, teres major. Now, look here. This branch which I am drawing right now, this is your subclavian artery. What artery? First artery is always subclavian, right? 
so this subclavian artery look here everyone this subclavian artery comes down all the way okay this subclavian artery this is the first rib right so subclavian artery passes over the first rib subclavian artery passes over the first rib and after that it comes all the way down here now subclavian artery starts from the trunk region and all the way subclavian artery will end at the lower border of the first rib subclavian artery will end at the lower border of first rib so this artery is your subclavian artery clear now from here this artery this pink color artery whatever i'm drawing this is your axillary artery now from where till where the axillary artery will start look here now till here clear axillary artery starts from the lateral border of the first rib from the lateral border of the first rib till the lower border of teres major okay again i'm telling you from the lateral border of first rib till the lower border of teres major is your axillary artery okay axillary artery starts from lateral border of your first rib till the lower border of teres major lateral border of first rib till the lower border of your teres major is your axillary artery and axillary artery is divided into three parts one which is above the pectoralis minor one which is behind the pectoralis minor and one which is below the pectoralis minor and that is the reason why i have told you in the starting that there is an mcq that is pectoralis minor why it is called as a key muscle of axilla the reason being pectoralis minor divides your axillary artery into three parts okay so this is your first part behind you have got second part and beneath you have got the third part three parts okay key muscle of axilla pectoralis minor this is the key muscle of axilla key muscle of axilla okay now what are the branches first part will give one branch second part will give two branches third part will give three branches so let me divide it this is the first part this is the second part this is the third part how do you remember it remember it like this 16s love songs and poems 16s love songs and poems so if you want to remember it in your way you can write it down as your wish so this is how officially i recommend it okay so what does s stand for s stands for superior thoracic artery superior thoracic artery what does t stands for t stands for thoraco acromion artery thoraco acromion artery this is a very important artery keep this thing in mind okay next what does l stands for l stands for lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery okay l stands for lateral thoracic artery everyone very good kavishka sp very good rushab rahul excellent rushab very good next s stands for subscapular artery subscapular artery and a and p stands for one artery comes from the front of uh, one artery comes from the front of the humerus this is humerus one artery make a circle from the front one artery will make a circle from the back so this is called as anterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery so we are done with all the arteries of the ax ax axillary artery branches all the branches of the axillary artery are you clear with this guys is everyone clear with this tarun ssr very good tarun right kavishka yes it is circumflex artery you are right but it is anterior and posterior circumflex artery anterior and posterior circumflex artery right so we are done with first thing what they'll ask you is branches second thing what they'll ask you is the topography from where till where the the axillary artery ranges 
third important thing what is the key muscle of axilla so these three questions can be asked okay next after that we i told you i will discuss about the subclavian artery right so let us start discussing about the subclavian artery have you all understood this before i discuss subclavian artery have you all understood this very good right now coming to coming to the subclavian artery what are the branches of subclavian artery all of you know all the way from the right side we have got subclavian artery going all the way like this right so this is the subclavian artery this is the sternum and this is how the subclavian artery will pass okay now look here. so this is how the subclavian artery is passing this is how the subclavian artery passes so this is your subclavian artery again one very very important thing here very important thing is that subclavian artery is also divided into three parts like axillary artery and what is this muscle which is attached to first rib in the starting i told you when i was teaching you brachial plexus there are two muscles that attach to the first rib and what is this muscle here okay what are the muscles that are attached to the very good sanjay pande anterior scalene right so this is your anterior scalene muscle anterior scalene muscle okay this is your anterior scalene muscle so can i tell anterior scalene is a key muscle here which divides the subclavian artery into three parts what are those three parts this is one behind the scalene retroscalene that is two after the scalene that is three there are three parts of a uh, subclavian artery okay now let us discuss one by one the first part of subclavian artery what are the branches does it give all of you know pay attention because learning this branches is a little bit difficult so i'll be teaching you as per the location as it goes okay so the first branch the first branch is from the first part there is an artery that goes top like this it passes through the vertebral foramen and ascends up on the other side also through the vertebral foramen it is going down it means it is called as vertebral artery so the first branch a branch a in the first part branch a in the first part is your vertebral artery vertebral artery okay second important yeah very good mohammed yunus is telling foramen transverse arium yeah this is for transverse foramen through, through the transverse foramen whatever artery is entering this is called as a vertebral artery okay second important thing uh there is one more branch now look here carefully look here carefully don't comment down there is one more branch here okay now this branch supplies to your cervical region supplies to your thyroid okay so this is a subclavian artery one branch supplies to your thyroid here one branch supplies to your cervical region cervical and thyroid thyro cervical trunk okay the second part which i call it as b thyro cervical trunk okay thyro cervical trunk where is your thyroid artery uh, sorry where is your thyroid gland let us say your thyroid gland is somewhere here this is your thyroid gland okay now this branch this branch goes all the way like this and supplies your lower surface of the thyroid gland then i can call this artery as inferior thyroid artery one branch of this thyro cervical trunk is inferior thyroid artery guys even in case of axillary artery also if you just want to remember these uh, uh, these arteries that is enough need not to remember the picture right here also but for your easy understanding i'm teaching you so in thyro cervical trunk one is inferior thyroid artery second artery second artery is going transverse like this it is going transversely so when it is going transversely can i call it as transverse cervical artery the second artery is transverse cervical artery transverse cervical artery and last artery i cannot draw it here that is suprascapular artery 
सुप्रस कैपलर आर्टरी आर यू क्लियर गाइस थ्री आर्टरीज इन्फीरियर थायरॉइड आर्टरी ट्रांसवर्स सर्वाइकल आर्टरी एंड सुप्रस कैपलर आर्टरी आर द ब्रांचेस ऑफ थायरो सर्वाइकल ट्रंक ओके डन वी आर डन विद द फर्स्ट पार्ट कमिंग टू द सेकंड पार्ट कमिंग टू द सेकंड पार्ट नाउ इन द सेकंड पार्ट वी हैव गॉट वन ब्रांच that is called as costo cervical that is called as costo cervical okay and and one more thing one more thing i forgot here one more thing i forgot here uh suchaita has reminded me that thing thank you suchaita one more thing i forgot here that we have also got one more artery from the first part that is artery number c artery c okay so that artery goes inside look here that artery is going inside the thoracic cavity so if it is going inside the thoracic cavity i call it as internal thoracic artery so that artery goes inside the thoracic cavity like this okay so this artery number c is called as internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery okay internal thoracic artery. if you want to remember a little more just remember that internal thoracic artery will give out two branches okay so what is this branch and what is this branch this is called as superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery and another one is called as the musculophrenic artery why are you drawing musculophrenic artery below because diaphragm you have it here so internal thoracic artery is going down and supplying your diaphragm okay musculophrenic artery clear coming to the second part costo cervical trunk coming to the third part now coming to the third part third part is also got one artery that is called dorsal scapular artery dorsal scapular artery so guys look at this picture and tell me what are the branches we just discussed we discussed first part is having vertebral artery which goes up next we have got thyro cervical trunk supplies to thyroid and cervical thyroid means from here it is coming and supplying to the lower surface of the thyroid so inferior thyroid artery artery going transversely transverse cervical artery artery going back on back and supplying to the scapula supra scapular artery okay next we have got internal thoracic artery because from the first part there is an artery that goes down inside internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery is divided into three superior epigastric and musculophrenic i know it is difficult for you to remember now but when you revise once or twice it will be easy second part has got costo cervical if first part has got thyro cervical there is no mistake that second part has got costo cervical and third part has got dorsal scapula clear these are the branches here did everyone understood these two branches here yeah yes or no we are about to finish guys venkatesh head and neck we shall have at the end okay head and neck we shall discuss very clearly detailedly slowly don't worry about that i'll teach you head and neck very clearly don't worry about that shall we continue now now one very important thing very important thing is that all of you should pay attention now here i'm not telling you now i'll just draw it i'll draw it and then i'll tell you okay so this is your i'm just drawing the picture which you already know i'm just drawing the picture which you have already studied okay 
right what did i tell you in the starting i told you that from the right subclavian artery the first artery which goes up like this any idea guys again please what is this artery vertebral artery okay uh, frederick i will recap at the end okay so this is vertebral artery which is going up so from the left subclavian also we have got a vertebral artery which goes up like this okay both the vertebral arteries join together both the vertebral arteries jo join together and form this artery called as what is this this artery is called as basilar artery this artery is called as basilar artery and what is this called vertebral artery vertebral artery i'm really shocked guys you are in first year and you are answering very fast really great right normally how does the blood pass guys how does the blood move tell me from the heart blood enters look here now very carefully don't come in from the heart blood enters into the brachiocephalic trunk and blood enters into the common carotid artery from there here blood enters into the right subclavian artery and from here it supplies to your complete upper limb the left side also same it enters into your common carotid artery on the left it enters into your brachiocephalic it enters into your subclavian artery and from here the blood enters into your vertebral artery on both the sides and from there the blood enters into the basilar artery and supplies to your brain this thing all of us know but sometimes it might happen like this that if there is any kind of obstruction again i am telling you listen if there is any kind of obstruction within your right subclavian artery can you look at this if there is any kind of obstruction here this is an obstruction it can be a clot it can be an embolus right it can be a stenosis stenosis means this is a vessel if the vessel is closed completely this is called stenosis there is stenosis or whatever it is now do you think do you think will the blood from the heart will it enter into the right sub right subclavian artery and finally supply your right side of the arm it won't supply because there is a obstruction over there so what will happen is that look here very carefully now what will happen is that blood will go all the way blood will go all the way through the left subclavian artery from the left subclavian artery it will go to the basilar artery from the basilar artery blood vertebral artery from the vertebral artery it has entered into the basilar artery and what will happen is that instead of instead of blood entering into the basilar artery and supplying to your brain out of that 40 to 50% of the blood will come back and enter into the right vertebral artery from here the blood will enter into the right subclavian artery and supply to your upper limb so this is a bypass mechanism and because of this what what you are doing what you are doing is that from the left side from the left side whatever blood is going to the brain the right side of the body is stealing that blood isn't it it is stealing that blood look at the picture now look here have you understood whatever i told you guys as there is an obstruction here blood cannot be supplied to right side so what will happen is that blood will take a left turn it will go up and from here blood will be supplied to your right side of the arm you understood this this condition is called as subclavian steel syndrome subclavian artery on the right side is stealing the blood from the left side this condition you call it as subclavian this is a clinical point subclavian steel syndrome have you understood subclavian steel syndrome guys everyone yes or no be fast yeah very good very good very good now let us enter into another clinical point what does this clinical point all of you know all of you know that we have got a muscle coming all the way like this and this muscle is attached to the first rib so all of you called it as anterior scalene muscle anterior scalene we have got one more muscle that is coming all the way and attaching to the first rib all of you call this as posterior scalene muscle posterior scalene muscle right and 
just beneath the clavicle, attached to the clavicle, we have got another muscle here. Just beneath, attached to the clavicle, we have got a muscle. This is called as subclavius muscle. What is this muscle? This is called as subclavius muscle. Sub means below, clavius means clavicle. Subclavius muscle. Now, this is the brachial, sorry, this is the subclavian artery that is coming out. Okay. I hope you remember this. This is the subclavian artery which is coming out. In the previous picture also I told you that subclavian artery comes from the anterior scalene and middle scalene. In between anterior and middle scalene, the subclavian artery will pass. I have told you this previously itself. Isn't it? I have told you this thing previously itself. And I also told you that brachial plexus also passes between anterior and middle, middle scalene. Then where is brachial plexus here? Brachial plexus is sitting on the subclavian artery. This is the brachial plexus. This is what? This is the brachial plexus on this. Okay? This is the brachial plexus. Not only this, just nearer to this, just nearer to this, you have got a vein also coming from this thing. This is called as subclavian vein. Subclavian vein. So, what is? what are the things we have here? We have got subclavian artery. We have got subclavian vein. We have got brachial plexus. Brachial plexus. What I am trying to teach you is that, for example, if patient is having, if patient is having hypertrophy of the scalene muscles, if scalene muscles get really big, what will happen? Don't you think the subclavian artery will be compressed? Don't you think the subclavian vein, will, vein also will be compressed? And also, the if subclavian artery is compressed, brachial plexus also will be compressed. Yes or no? So, the first important reason, what, what is that? Hypertrophy of the muscles. Hypertrophy of muscles. Clear? Next important thing is that, next important thing is that, now pay attention very carefully. Next important thing is that, look here. This is the place where your lung is located. This is the place where your lung is located, exactly telling apex of the lung. This is the apex of the lung, okay. For example, if the apex of the lung has got a tumor, there is a tumor in the apex of the lung. So, when there is a tumor in the apex of the lung, don't you think that tumor will compress your subclavian artery? Don't you think that tumor will compress the subclavian vein? And don't you think that tumor will compress the brachial plexus? This kind of tumor you call it as pancoast tumor. Pancoast tumor. And where is this pancoast tumor located? In the apex of the lung. Where is it? In the apex of the lung. And third important reason is that, let us say, uh, this patient is so lucky enough that he is having an extra rib in his body. I will show you the picture down. Look at this patient here. Don't you find an extra rib? This is called as extra cervical rib. You see, there is an extra cervical rib like this. So, let us say, if this patient is also having an extra rib like this, there is an extra rib like this. Don't you think the space there gets so narrow and the subclavian artery, vein and brachial plexus, they get compressed? Third important reason is cervical rib. You call this condition as cervical rib. Okay. Basically, this extra cervical rib arises from C7. Okay from C7, an extra rib will be formed, as you can see in the picture. Now, because of all these things, these artery vein and brachial plexus is compressed. Okay? If artery is compressed, what will happen? The entire, all of you guys, take a rubber band, tie it to your hand so hardly, or take a rope and tie it to your hand so hardly, what are the changes will you see? First thing, your hand gets completely red. Second thing, the temperature here falls down, it will get cool completely. Third important thing is that the hand will be little swollen. And fifth, fourth important thing is that you cannot feel any kind of sensation here. Okay? Why the hand will become red? Because the, the, the arterial blood is stagnant over here. Second thing is that why you will feel numbness? Because the nerves that are supplying here are not working. Why the hand swells up? Because of the veins that are releasing the fluid outside. 
this condition you call it as thoracic outlet syndrome so in the thoracic cavity there is a problem with the outlet you call this as thoracic outlet syndrome have you understood have you understood this everyone clearly you understood it because this is very very important guys you understood this clear everyone very good very good so as you can see in this patient the left hand is okay you tell me in this patient thoracic outlet syndrome is there on the right side the effect is on the right or the effect is on the left tell me very good very good sp it is on the right so chaita das very good it is on the right side okay see the right side is swollen the right side is little bit red here right so this is thoracic outlet syndrome i i can also show it to you in this picture as well you see this picture as well that the artery the artery is compressed and it is swollen right so this is thoracic outlet syndrome clear right so almost we are getting closer guys one more topic and then we shall go for the arteries of the hand now we are done discussing axillary subclavian artery we are done discussing the axillary artery right we discussed all the clinical points which are related with this and now we shall be discussing the anastomosis anastomosis around the elbow okay now for this i want you to remember just one mnemonic s i m r P A I R, okay. What is this mnemonic? Is that S I M R P A I R? Simmer pair, simmer pair. Now, what is this? All of you know, concentrate. This is very very easy and interesting. This is your brachial artery. Brachial artery is a continuation of what? Axillary artery. Keep that thing in mind. So, brachial artery divides. into two arteries i told you which is going on to the radial side is called radial artery which is going on to the left side is called as ulnar artery okay so this is your radial artery this is your ulnar artery okay and and this is your brachial artery brachial artery now brachial artery brachial artery will give out a branch it will give out a branch like this this branch is called as deep brachial artery deep brachial artery it will give out a branch called deep brachial artery now look here deep brachial artery will divide into two branches it will divide into two branches like this okay in the same way on the other side also there are two branches like this there is one branch here there is a second branch here. how many branches total tell me we have got 1 we have got 2 we have got 3 we have got 4 okay so 1 2 3 and 4 s i m r what does s stand for superior what does i stand for inferior and second important thing you need to know is that there are branches coming from the brachial artery here there are branches from the radial and ulnar artery also branches which are coming from the top they are called as collateral branches branches which are going from the bottom they are called as recurrent branches so the collateral branches recurrent branches they join together and form anastomosis that is what is called as anastomosis around the elbow <coughs> sorry clear now what are these branches s stands for s stands for superior ulnar why it is ulnar because it is on the ulnar side superior ulnar what are the branches from the top i told you collateral branches superior ulnar collateral artery superior ulnar collateral artery below the superior ulnar collateral this artery you call it as inferior ulnar collateral artery inferior ulnar collateral artery okay superior ulnar collateral below that inferior ulnar collateral and next what is m m stands for middle collateral artery what is this middle collateral artery 
and what does r stand for r is on the radial side so this is called as radial collateral artery radial collateral artery clear easy yeah s i m r so p a i r s i m r is paired with p a i r what is p look here from the ulnar side from the ulnar side there is a branch that comes like this and it joins with the superior ulnar collateral artery what will this branch be guys anyone what will this branch be easy to remember superior ulnar collateral is s attached to that what is there p what does p stands for posterior ulnar not collateral this time very good shujatali recurrent posterior ulnar recurrent artery posterior ulnar recurrent artery okay posterior ulnar recurrent artery next i is pairing with a what does this a there is one more artery that supplies here and this is called as a what is this a a stands for anterior what does a stand for anterior this is anterior ulnar recurrent artery anterior ulnar recurrent artery okay so next m joins with i r joins with r m joins with i r joins with r now look here from the ulnar artery from the ulnar artery you have got a branch that is coming like this okay this branch divides into two more branches okay what is this branch named this branch is called as common interosseous artery common interosseous artery it is common for it is common for two arteries one is called as anterior interosseous one is called as posterior interosseous anterior and posterior interosseous okay now look here very carefully from the posterior interosseous you have got a branch that is coming and it is joining with the middle okay now what is this name of the artery this artery is arising from posterior interosseous artery the name of this artery starts with i i stands for interosseous not collateral interosseous recurrent okay so what is this this is interosseous recurrent and the last branch radial collateral artery right so from here there is a one more branch that is going above and attaching the radial collateral artery this is called as radial recurrent artery we are done with the anastomosis around the elbow so all these anastomoses are happening exactly here in the elbow region okay so have you all understood this have you all understood this two more topics are left have you all understood this guys is it clear guys no doubts right it is very very easy simr pair if you remember you will understand everything okay now we shall discuss one more difficult topic that is anastomosis around the scapula i don't know why students find a large difficulty huge difficulty in this topic it is because of amit this is this is black coffee this is black coffee thank you <laughs> right anastomosis around the scapula so we shall be discussing about anastomosis around the scapula it is not difficult guys just follow whatever i am teaching okay don't write anything just look at whatever i'm teaching it will be really easy for you very very easy trust me now but to understand this one thing you should know we have three parts of subclavian artery three parts of axillary artery if you know this then this will be easy okay so let me draw this this entire thing is a artery okay what is this artery keep it aside let us say i'm dividing this artery like this upper one is called subclavian that continuation down one is called as axillary so subclavian has got three parts right part number 1 part number 2 part number 3 axillary is also having three parts part number 1 part number 2 part number 3 okay 
let me give some space part number 2 part number 3 okay so what what artery is this this is subclavian artery okay this is axillary artery axillary artery okay frame each and everything so clearly in your mind guys very easy first part of subclavian artery if you remember right in the first part i have told you one branch that goes above vertebral artery i told you another branch i told you trunk that trunk is called as thyro cervical trunk if you remember right so this trunk here is called as thyro cervical trunk this is called as thyro cervical trunk okay thyro cervical trunk i told you it will give branches what are the branches of thyro cervical trunk one it supplies to the thyroid region that is inferior thyroid artery another one is inferior thyroid artery okay see one branch goes up to the thyroid gland inferior thyroid artery next one is what is the next branch yeah next branch two more branches i told you what is the next branch of thyro cervical trunk transverse cervical artery and third branch is supra scapular artery right so i am drawing now transverse cervical artery look here this is transverse cervical artery which is going transversely like this it is going transversely like this okay so this artery this artery is called as so let 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 it be deep branch of transverse cervical artery cervical artery right so this was the thing we discussed right the deep branch of transverse cervical artery next artery of uh, this th thyro cervical trunk which we discussed was supra scapular so i told you it passes on to the top of the scapula look here this is a supra scapular artery okay this is what supra scapular artery so let me write it down this is your supra scapular artery supra scapular artery clear now forget it let us go on to the axillary artery in the third part of axillary artery uh, what did i tell you i told you 16s love songs and poems so let me go back let me go back the last branch the last branches we discussed was subscapular artery anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery right so let us go to the picture so the third part is giving what branches guys the third part is giving what branches subscapular artery okay it gives anterior circumflex humeral artery it gives posterior circumflex humeral artery let me write it down this is anterior circumflex posterior circumflex anterior and posterior circumflex clear this is your subscapular subscapular artery now from this subscapular artery from this subscapular artery okay let me write it all the way like this clear from this subscapular a small branch will go like this okay this is called as circumflex scapular circumflex scapular now if you look here guys can you find an anastomosis anastomosis between transverse cervical supra scapular and subscapular again i'm telling transverse cervical supra scapular and subscapular three of them together they formed an anastomosis here this anastomosis is formed on the dorsal surface of the scapula so this is one anastomosis around the scapula okay so anastomosis is formed between subscapular supra scapular transverse cervical artery two branches from subscap subclavian artery one branch from axillary artery this anastomosis is it clear for all of you before i go to the next anastomosis this is clear very good nice next important thing is that from the second part from the second part i told you that we have got one branch from the second part of axillary artery we have got a branch like this this branch is called as thoracoacromion artery right this is called as thoraco 
Acromion artery. What will it does? Acromion is there. It means it will give a branch to the acromion process. So, what does it do is that it will give a branch to the acromion process like this. Not only that, even suprascapular artery also will give one branch to the acromion process like this. Not only that, even the posterior circumflex humeral artery also will give a branch to the acromion process like this. So, this is called as acromion branch of posterior circumflex artery, acromion branch of thoracoacromion artery, acromion branch of scapular artery, uh, suprascapular artery. Okay. What are these branches? Acromion branches. Acromion branches. Okay. Now, all these acromion branches on the acromion process of scapula are also forming one more anastomosis. So, we are done with the anastomosis of the scapula. These are the two anastomoses. Have you understood? Clear all of you? Perfectly clear? No doubt, right? Shall we start the branches now? Because we from here we started. We have started with the subclavian artery, we are done. We have started with the axillary artery, done. We have started with the branches of the brachial artery, radial and ulnar, we are done. Now we shall discuss the branches here and we shall close the topic. Are you all ready, guys? Right, so two ways I will teach you this. I will just teach you now on the hand and after that I will write it down later on and I will send it to you. Okay, I will teach you here on the hand and I will close the session. After that, after that I will, uh, what I will do is that I will write it here in the night and in the morning I will send it to you. Clear? Right. All of you look now. All of you pay attention. Look here. We have got we have got two different types of arteries, all of you know, okay. What are these two different types of arteries, guys? So, all of you look here. One artery here, this is called as radial artery. One artery here, this artery is called as radial artery, right? All of you know, this is radial artery. Now, one artery which is located here, this is called as ulnar artery. What is this artery? Ulnar artery, because it is on the ulnar side. So, this is called as ulnar artery. So, this will be your ulnar artery, okay. Now, radial artery will give a branch here. It will give a branch, okay. Ulnar artery is also giving a branch here. Ulnar artery is also giving a branch, clear. Now, what is this branch? Tell me. What is this branch? Tell me. This is a branch that is given on the carpal side. This is the carpal region. So, this is a branch that is given on the carpal side and carpal side on the palmar region or on the dorsal region on the palmar region. So, can I call it as palmar carpal branch of radial artery? I want all of you to write down just the uh, just these things. I mean, just the words which I am telling you. This is called palmar carpal branch of radial artery. This is called palmar carpal branch of ulnar artery. So, palmar carpal branch of radial and ulnar artery, both of them have formed an anastomosis here. This is called as palmar carpal anastomosis. Okay, palmar carpal anastomosis. You are clear? Now, this radial artery will go on to the back. Okay, this radial artery will go on to the back like this. It will go on to the back. Let us forget about the radial artery. This radial artery has gone onto the back. Let us forget about this. Now, another important thing you need to know is that this ulnar artery will come, will enter all the way, right? 
this will go all the way like this it will enter into the palmar region and this ulnar artery is making a u turn and it will stop here this is an ulnar artery which is going all the way and it is stopping here okay now this ulnar artery look here very carefully this ulnar artery will give a branch in between the two fingers so it is giving a branch in between two fingers like this it is giving a second branch in between two fingers it is giving a third branch in between two fingers okay now this branch supplies to your digits so this is a branch which is common for both the digits so this is called as common digital artery but it is on the palmar side so you call it as common palmar digital artery what is that common palmar digital artery so look this supplies to your index finger and it gives another branch to your middle finger here also it gives a branch to your middle finger it gives a branch to your ring finger clear here also it will give a branch to your ring finger it will give a branch to your little finger okay so what are these these branches these branches are called as common palmar digital artery one common palmar digital artery number 2 common palmar digital artery number 3 okay and there is last palmar digital artery why did i call this as palmar digital artery because it is giving only one branch it is not dividing it is not common it is common only for one artery one branch so it is called as just digital artery palmar digital artery till here everyone is clear yeah till here before i proceed on to the back is everyone clear till here come on i need your response guys fine very good now what will happen is that i told you that radial artery went on to the back but one branch of radial artery will come all the way like this it will come all the way like this and it will join this radial artery is joining with the ulnar artery now if you compare here you can see an arch you can see an arc now this arc is formed by 80% of ulnar artery only 20% of your radial artery so this arc is so superficial and you call it as superficial palmar arch yesterday when i was teaching you the spaces of the hand there also i have told you superficial palmar arch i'll teach you tomorrow i told you right so this is a superficial palmar arch okay superficial palmar arch is formed by 80% of the ulnar artery 20% of the radial artery okay now let us leave this discussion here now what i'll be doing is that let us go on to the back now on the back side on the back side if you can see this radial artery comes all the way like this okay now after coming this radial artery will give one branch on to the dorsal side so can i call it as this is the first branch on the dorsal side of my hand right so can i call it as first dorsal metacarpal artery because it is the first branch right so this this is the branch here this branch is called as first dorsal metacarpal artery in latin you call it as princeps metacarpal artery are you all clear are you all clear so this is called as princeps meta princeps means first princeps metacarpal artery or first dorsal metacarpal on the dorsal side so this first dorsal metacarpal artery will give you three branches what are these three branches one branch goes to the thumb another branch another branch also goes to your thumb and one branch it goes to your index finger in this way so first dorsal metacarpal artery gives three branches two to the thumb one to your index finger clear yeah now what will happen is that this radial artery will make a hole i mean it will not make a hole actually it will pierce and it will come on to the ventral side right so in simple terms to tell that radial artery is making a hole on the back and it is coming on to the ventral side okay yesterday in the class i told you that in between my fingers i have got dorsal interosseous i told you right and i also told you that dorsal interosseous are bipinnate there are two uh, let us say there are two penna right or let us say there are two limbs of this muscle so in between the two bellies of the muscle this nerve will this artery will pass 
okay let us say this finger is one belly this finger is another belly from the center it will pass and radial artery will come like this clear radial artery will come like this now here what radial artery will do look here radial artery it will it will go all the way like this it will come all the way till here okay radial artery is also trying to make an arch yes or no now look here this radial artery will give some branches what are these branches this branch will go and attach to what is this artery common palmar digital artery okay so this branch which attaches to common palmar digital artery what what is this branch called as guys anyone yeah this branch is called as common metacarpal artery why are you calling it as metacarpal why are you calling it as common because it is attaching to common digital artery why are you calling it as metacarpal because the artery is located on the first, on the second metacarpal next there is second branch here this is called as second metacarpal artery why are you calling it as second metacarpal because it is located on the second metacarpal and next third metacarpal artery why because it is located on the third metacarpal clear all of you till here yeah all of you guys right now look what will happen from the ulnar side from the ulnar side a branch will come like this look here very carefully from the ulnar side a branch is coming like this and attaching to your radial artery now here the radial artery is 80% a branch from ulnar artery is 20% this is called as deep palmar arch so the difference between superficial palmar arch and deep palmar arch is superficial palmar arch 80% is ulnar artery 20% is radial artery in deep palmar arch 80% is radial artery 20% is ulnar artery. I want you to understand this thing so badly guys. Have you understood it? We are done with the two palmar arches on the ventral side. Okay. Now, now what we shall do is that we shall just turn back and look what is happening on the back. Even on the back, even on the back, two things will happen. What are those two things? There is a branch that comes all the way like this, right? In the same way, there is one more branch that is coming all the way like this, in this way. So now this is called as dorsal carpal branch of radial artery, dorsal carpal branch of ulnar artery. Previously I told you palmar carpal branch of radial, palmar carpal branch of ulnar. Now I am telling you dorsal carpal branch of radial, dorsal carpal branch of ulnar. Both of them joined here and form dorsal carpal anastomosis. Clear? Dorsal carpal anastomosis. Now, from this anastomosis, you have got branches. This is called as dorsal metacarpal artery. This is one dorsal metacarpal artery. This is the second dorsal metacarpal artery. This is the third dorsal metacarpal artery. How many dorsal metacarpals? Three. Even on the front, how many common digital arteries? One, two, three. And on the back, how many dorsal metacarpal arteries? Three. Now, this dorsal metacarpal arteries, this dorsal metacarpal arteries will divide into two branches. Look here. So, one branch goes like this. One branch goes all the way like this. Okay. Next. One branch goes all the way like this. The second branch supplies to two fingers. Next, the third dorsal metacarpal artery use one branch like this, use another branch like this. Clear? So, if you look clearly, if you look clearly, every finger is having four arteries. Look, two on the back, two on the front. Look here, two on the back, two on the front. Here also two on the back, two on the front, two on the back, two on the front. So, every finger is having two branches. Clear? All of you? So, I am just recapping it so fastly. Radial artery, ulnar artery. Palmar carpal branch of radial, palmar carpal branch of ulnar. Okay. 
So this is superficial palmarage formed by 80% of ulnar, 20% of radial. Deep palmarage, 80% of radial, 20% of ulnar. Clear? So if you have understood this, if you have understood, Amit, you understood it, right? Amit, Sanch, Sanchaita Das, Sanyasi Pandit, Diraj Acharya, all of you have understood it, right? Clear? Right. So, this is all the arterial system. I will write this tonight and then I will send it to you in the morning, guys. Okay, so I hope you understood whatever I have taught you today. Have you all understood all the topics which I have taught you today, guys? We have discussed a lot of clinical points as well here today about anhydrosis and all, about I mean the Bernard syndrome and all, clumpies and all of these things. And yeah, this is how the claw hand looks, right? So I did not show you the picture of claw hand, right? So this is how. The claw hand looks. Okay, this is how the claw hand looks. Clear, guys? So, how was how was the class today, guys? Have you all enjoyed? Was it worthy? Yeah. So immediately uh, the lower limb will start most probably from the next class uh, guys from the next class we shall start lower limb okay and uh, continuously in that in uh, in, 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 our, in our telegram groups i'll be posting on uh, sanyasi pandit we shall start the venous drainage uh, in the next class and then venous drainage is just 5 to 10 minutes topic so after that we shall continue with the um, lower limb okay so we shall start that lower limb and all so what i want to ask you is have you yes amit claw hand is different claw hand is different and policeman tip is different policeman tip and claw hand both of them are different amit so if you can see this this is this is policeman tip okay this is claw hand next class amit next class will be physiology right it will be tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be physiology class by Dr. Sriteja. And next Monday, I uh, there will be my class. Okay. Okay, okay, guys. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the telegram group, right? Anyways, I'll be sending you in the notes. So thank you so much for all your patience. Thank you so much. And goodbye and good night.